Hi guys! I'm almost a little sad that this is the last video in this Easy Eye Week series. I, I can't thank you enough for the amazingly supportive, sweet feedback on these videos. Obviously I put out videos and I hope people like them, but I had no idea that this uh, group of videos would be received the way it was. And it seems like, um, from what some of you have told me, it's exactly what you were needing at this time. And it just, it makes me feel so good when I see comments like that, where someone's saying, you know, I was just hoping for something like this. It's been a really fun week. And uh, to just kind of top off this series, I really feel like with the foreshadow look, it was kind of a dramatic look. It really incorporated some elements of eye makeup that I think are a little bit more toward the advanced side, you know, a little bit more challenging things. And so I thought, where can I go from there for the last video? And it just seemed natural to try to take some of your questions and cover those odds and ends of eye makeup that maybe I didn't talk about in any of these other videos. So thank you so much. I um, asked for your questions on Twitter and Facebook. And to sort of illustrate my answers to some of these questions, I uh, will have a little demo that I'll cut to a couple times throughout the video to show you about this look. And I had posted my call for questions before um, day four's video went up. So I saw a lot of people asking about the outer V and that is definitely covered in detail in the um, day four video. Kristen says, my eyeshadow always ends up looking muddy or even like a three day old black eye. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. Maybe I'm over blending. I do think you might be doing that. And when you're thinking about blending, chances are you might be, you know, just going over your entire eye look. Let's say you just applied something to your crease and that's the area that you want to be blended. But then when you pull in your big old blending brush, you're going over the whole eye look. And you don't really need to do that. I would really try to focus the brush just on the edge of what you want to blend out. So if I just applied a crease shade, I will keep that crease brush right on the edge without bringing it in on top of what's on the lid or what's in my outer corner. Melinda Reed says, I'm a beauty advisor over a Smashbox counter and I have clients who ask a lot um, how to figure out what colors to put together in a palette. I explain the best I can, but I can tell they still don't understand. How would you go about explaining and breaking this down for them? Um, I think it's really all about being able to identify where are the dark, medium, and light shades. If you think back to some of the videos I've done, whether it be you know using a duo and using the sandwich method, or a trio, or even a quad, you know it really comes down to having maybe a mid-tone shade or a dark shade or a light shade that you can call on. And just as an example, I'm holding up the new Smashbox matte palette here, and I do think sometimes palettes are very strategically laid out in a certain way to help you understand how to use them. Here I see two distinct like kind of color families to work in, one on this side, one on the other. Not every palette's that way, but it's always something to look for, like is, is there perhaps a pairing that is laid out right in front of my face? And if I don't cover this in depth enough right now, now, um, I do think this is going to be a future video all about palettes and something I would refer to as training palettes, palettes that do a really good job of laying out color combos for those who have a little trouble figuring it out. But looking for the dark, medium, and light, here's light right in the center, um, medium shades, which can be great for a soft crease color. They can be great um, on the lid. And then where are your darkest shades? Here, here, those are the ones where if you want the dramatic outer V, you use them there. You smudge them on the lower lash line. Those are your shades for creating contrast. And not every look has to incorporate four or five colors. Sometimes it could just be one or two. And I can see like the way these are layered right here. You know, there's some easy to identify duos just looking vertically. Now, not that every client who comes to your counter has watched my full, uh, you know, beginner eye series, but once you are able to identify the darks, mediums, and lights, I do think if you plug them into the different formulas like the same sandwich method, like the trio method, or using a quad, it really becomes much more simple to figure out. A neutral palette like that, it's very easy to determine, you know, where are the dark mediums and lights. And then you've got palettes like this is the Vice, is it the Vice 4? And it's got all these bright tones. And what do you do with bright colors? For a lot of people, the only thing they want to do with the colorful pops and palettes like this is avoid them. There are a couple of ways, a couple of easy ways that I would challenge you to integrate a bright, like kind of medium shade. So I'm talking about colors like this, 
or this, or this, or even this. Number one, try popping it all over the lid. Keep your neutral crease color, you know, keep your eye look very neutral otherwise, but pop that bright shade right on the lid. It's kind of a peekaboo effect because when your eyes are open, you don't even necessarily see it that much. And then you look down, it's like, oh, there's a fun little pop of color there. When it's surrounded safely by neutrals, it can feel easier to pull that off. Another place that I would challenge you to try a color is the lower lash line. It's it's just, you know, it's a smaller surface area. It's a fun way to accentuate the look. You can keep everything very neutral up top if you want to, but just use the colorful pop on the lower lash line, and I will explain that in my little demo coming up. So rest assured, more to come on this whole how to use large palettes concept, but for those of you who are just starting out and just getting into the world of using more eyeshadows than just maybe a quad or a trio, um, these palettes from Maybelline, while they may not be all around across the board, my favorite quality eyeshadows, I do think there are some hit and miss things happening here, but I'm holding up the nudes and the blush nudes. These are very good training type eyeshadow palettes because they are laid out in such a way that it's absolutely goof proof what shades you should wear together because they are quads here. Four, four, four. They're in trios. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Here and then duos. Two here, two here, two here. See how it's been brilliantly laid out in that way. And there's your reminder of how that all works. They've got little graphics on the back to show you how the shades come together. So not every palette is that way, obviously. But if you're kind of you know trying to get a feel for what shades work well together, these palettes have been laid out specifically to show you that. Carol says, "What false eyelashes run longer than Ardell, if any? I tried Demi Wispies." but they didn't look right going three quarters of the way across my lashes. Um, and a lot of others seem about the same. So she's talking about not just length of the lash, but left to right, how far they cover the lash line. I would say look into the Eyelure brand. These generally seem to cover a lot of surface area left to right. I mean, for my eyes, I pretty much always have to trim up the Eyelure lashes. And places you would find these, Ulta probably has the best selection. I also find some at Target. And I think even my Walmart store now is carrying, I saw a few of the Vegas Ney uh, variety there. Risha or Rika um, says it would be great if somebody could recommend single eyeshadows for a one shadow look. I will link below to a blog post and um, other videos I've done about one shadow looks so you can see some of those. And I'm actually considering an updated blog post with singles, duos, trios, and quads that I love. But a few ideas right now. I love these L'Oreal Infallible Singles. Um, a lot of these that are kind of a medium tone um, and have some shimmer are just ideal for the one shadow look. In fact, I will cut to a quick little demo where I show this shade called Bronze Taupe in action. I love this shade. This is this has been a longtime favorite. So I'll pat it all over my lid after applying a primer, of course, and um, just get it all packed on there. Then I use my Sigma E25 brush, dip into the very same shade, and buff it up into the crease. And I, it's just beautiful how this shade both catches the light and can look very shadowed in the crease. So beautiful neutral and you can do fun pops on the lower lash line as I'll show you coming up. Another infallible single that I think is great is Amber Rush. It's going to be warmer, more like a coppery rose gold type shade. From Maybelline there's this single called Cinnamon Spice. I think this is an awesome kind of bronzy brown which does the one shadow look perfectly. This Milani Bella Eyes line, I'm really kind of getting into these. The Bella Emerald shade is fun because, you know, it's a green, it's not too dark, it's not too light, and it's just got that little bit of sheen happening there. So that can be a great one shadow look. The Bella Purple shade can be really beautiful for that as well. Think about jewel tones. Um, when you get your mind kind of thinking they're like the sapphire type colors, ruby type shades, these, um, those are really ideal for the one shadow look when the shade has just a little bit of shine going on. Another kind of interesting color that I want to try for a one shadow look is this Press 
Prestige, um, Total Intensity, Shadow, and Hocus Pocus. And it is one of those shades that looks kind of like a teal, but when it's not catching the light, it almost looks like a reddish brown, you know? So I think that would be a really cool type of shade to try in the crease and on the lid. I have seen so many questions asking about techniques for hooded eyes, and I actually just recently watched a video from Mally Roncal. She is a celebrity makeup artist. I had the privilege of meeting her um, several years back. She's awesome, and she's got some great instructional videos on her YouTube channel. And one um, she did, she was like doing a Periscope session and a YouTube video at the same time. It was kind of cool, but the whole focus was hooded eyes and, you know, tricks for really making them pop. And you could see her in action, and I could, I could see the transformation taking place as she was applying these shadows. And she was really, like, making a point to kind of create a crease for herself, basically, that was probably a little above where her actual crease was using deeper shades up there and then she popped a lot of shimmer on her lid and it really did help create the illusion of you know an actual lid space and a crease so i will link to that video below in the description box but she's got more just in-depth tips and just getting a visual of it seeing her apply it i think will help you a lot margaret miner says i'd like to see a tutorial on how you apply liner slash shadow underneath your eye and i'm going to show you that method today um just one idea for the way i do it for a very smoky like smoky pop of color on the lower lash line so here's what i do I I like to get some sort of liner on the lower inner rim. Today I'm using black. It's the Master Precise Skinny from Maybelline and I just apply it to the inner rim and kind of smudge it a little bit between the lashes on the actual lower lash line itself just to help in the blending process as we move forward. Another super easy trick for applying a color to your lower lash line is to use a great long wearing cream shadow stick there. So this Maybelline color tattoo in the shade Lilac Lust, it's kind of a dusty purple shade, very soft. And um, you can just swipe this on your lower lash line and you could leave it be because this actually does set. I find these to be very long wearing. There are a bunch of shadow sticks similar to this on the market from Milani, Jordana, um, higher end brands like Mali, like Laura Mercier. Uh, the Balm has some great shadow sticks now that really lock in and set and they can give you that look of beautiful smudgy smoky liner. But a fun way to incorporate a little added pop of color is to take a powder shadow that kind of coordinates with that shade and put it on top with either a pencil brush or a smudge brush. Today I'm using the Milani Bella Purple and you know this didn't go super bright. It just looks like a nice smoky plum on the lower lash line but it's different from what's happening on the lid. I think it's pretty. Um, this is one of those ways I would challenge you guys to incorporate color because it's a very small way to put color on the eyes, but it's really fun. Ivy is asking about the best eye brushes for small eyes. First and foremost, most important, the Sonia Kashuk Small Shadow Brush. Above all else, something small for patting shadow on the lid. This brush is not too big. It, I love the way it picks up product. It's, you know, surprisingly tapered down the sides. So when you lay that flat down into a shadow, it's going to be picking up product all along the side of the brush and you can just pat it on the lid. It's great for targeting shadow in the outer corner. If you don't have big eyes, like this is a great brush to have. Also, I think you need a small crease brush and this was really laid out in my day four video. Um, this MUA Makeup Academy Professional 315 brush is a great small crease brush for getting shadow exactly where you want it. It's all about placement when you've got small eyes because if you don't have a ton of eye real estate to work with, you want shadow to go exactly where you place your brush. And this just allows you to draw in that outer V like nothing. Um, before this brush, it was the Essence of Beauty Fine Crease Brush Duo that I was talking about from like my first days of existence on YouTube. Um, those I got at CVS as well. I'm not sure if anybody's still finding those in their stores, but um, this is a little bit more current option. And for blending type brushes that are a little bit smaller, um, the e.l.f. Studio line has something called the Crease Brush, which I used in a couple of my videos this week. They also have a blending brush. It's like a slimmed down version of a Sigma E25, and that can be really nice for targeting the crease. And then um, this Crease Brush, I like it for, you know, maybe applying a transition type shade, or if you just want to blend over the edge of your look and you feel like most blending brushes are too 
too fat, um, this can get a little bit more targeted area. I'm going to go over to Twitter to get some questions from there. Jocelyn says, how to keep lower eyeliner from smudging and smearing during the day? I've already tried topping with shadow and powdering the eye area. Um, well, one thing that I had just mentioned that I really like doing, I love the staying power of a lot of these um, smudge proof shadow sticks. So applying those on the lower lash line can be a nice little technique there. But I would love to know which eyeliners you've tried on your lower lash line because increasingly I think brands are putting out um, eyeliner pencils that have better staying power. This Master Precise Skinny is a really nice one. I love this Milani Supreme Cole Kajal eyeliner. ColourPop has a vast variety of shades in kind of a gel-like pencil that goes on really smoothly and does a good job of locking in. So I'm not sure if you've tried any of those brands, but they've been really good for me. Then in general, as far as just wearing lower liner, um, not considering like the lower inner rim because I will do that quite a bit, but just on the lower lash line itself, a lot of times I'm mainly using powder there. And that is where I think the jumbo shadow sticks are nice for providing a little base for that powder, giving it a little bit better staying power that way. Or, you know, brushing on a little bit of primer to that area before you apply a powder it can be a step to try. But the softness of powder on the lower lash line, I think really looks good. Amy Black says, so there's hooded eye issues and then there's people like me with big eyelids. I hate my big eyelids and eyes in general. I don't know what to do either. I've got to say, Amy, anytime I've done makeup on someone and my sisters in law, they have these big, beautiful blue eyes and there's so much space on their lids and in their crease to work with. So to me, big eyelids are kind of exciting. But one thing that you might try is uh, thickening up your eyeliner because I think a lot of people with small eyes or very little lid space you know, I would encourage those people to go with a very thin line so they don't sort of cut that off. But if you've got a lot of lid space, you might try, you know, going with a really thick, beautiful, like, cat eye winged liner across the upper lash line and see what you think of that method. I'm not sure if you've tried it before, but I imagine it will take up some of your lid space that way and really give you a lot of good definition. Amy's my Twitter buddy. I know she'll let me know how that worked out. Yari says, I have a few silver eyeshadows but can't seem to make them wearable. Um, Here's a way I think silver would be really pretty. Say you've got a color or even just a neutral shade all over your lid. Try popping the silver um, right on the center of the lid. Kind of blending it in, you know, on the sides to whatever you're topping. I mean, think of like a charcoal type color all over the lid and then that pop of a silvery shade right on the center of your eyelid. That would be such a pretty take on it. Maddie Miller says, anytime I wear false lashes, the inner corner pops up even when I bend and shape them. Help. Um, um, okay, I've got a tip, and this is a total secondhand stolen tip <laughs> from Lola Marie Seven, uh, Jess's channel. I love her. I just, I just love listening to her talk about stuff. She's really funny, and I, I just love her demeanor. And she talked about this um, using a clear lash glue with a brush tip. I think she had Ardell. I've got Salon Perfect right here, but she said somebody told her to try this. But you put your lashes on using whatever glue you typically use, like let's say Revlon Precision Lash Adhesive, or some people use the Duo Glue, and then you take this clear glue with the brush tip and you use it on the ends to reinforce the strip of lashes on your lash line. Like you just go right over it. And I thought, I have never thought to do that. I personally haven't tried this yet, but as soon as I heard that tip, I thought, that you know, that's a great idea. It would dry, obviously, with no color, and you could just use it on your ends. So I just thought that was an awesome tip. I do plan to try that out sometime and go over to her channel and say thanks if it worked. Holly says, I don't typically wear liquid eyeliner, but when I do, a straight line is nearly impossible. Any tips or tricks here? Um, number one, I think it's kind of about the product. I think using a product that allows Oop, excuse me. <laughs> Using a product that allows you to hold it more like a pen or pencil is helpful. So this Physician's Formula Eye Booster Pen is really great because it has a brush tip too. So it's tons of flexibility right there and it just makes it, you can hold it however you want to and it, it makes it really comfortable. But as far as application goes, Try to divide and conquer. Try to think of your eye not as one continuous space that you need to go across, but mentally divide your eye up into like thirds and think about, okay, my first third, I just need to get across there. Okay, done and lift the brush up 
regroup, go back and pick up where you left off and focus on just getting across the center part of your eye. Stop, take a deep breath, and then go across the end. Also, if there's anywhere, um, I know a lot of people do their makeup standing up and this is a hard thing to do, but if you've got a surface where you can plant your elbow like a desk um, and also use your finger like your pinky right here, there's so much stability there than if I was just, you know, free with my elbow and my hand and trying to apply the liner. Alejandra says, I have the baldest lower lash line on earth, so I never put mascara on there because my lashes are so thin. Could I still smoke out the lower lash line or will that look unfinished without mascara? Honestly, I think smoking out the lower lash line will make it less apparent that you have thin lashes there because when you think about it, if you do nothing, um, it's going to look lighter on your lower lash line, creating more of a backdrop for the few lashes you have to stand out and look like just a few. But if you keep it kind of smudgy and smoky, I think it will all kind of just mesh into one, you know, and you can smoke out the liner, go, go with kind of a soft shadow or go with this sort of a technique right here. And it may surprise you at how little it draws attention to your few lower lashes. So give it a try. I think it might work. Well, my memory card's telling me it's almost time to go, but I I think I got through honestly most of the questions that were asked so thank you guys so much for participating in this little Q&A. I hope some of these tips uh, will be the answer for you that really end up helping you out. Oh I have one more tip. One more tip for those of you who are like you know I don't know what to do with my palettes. I'm not sure how to integrate colors and do all this. Here's something I would really recommend. Give yourself some makeup playtime. Sit down to your makeup area when you don't have anywhere you need to go because experimentation is I think a lot less likely when you know you've got an important appointment to go to or you gotta go to work. You know, you're probably gonna go with what works. But find a time when you can sit down and experiment and just try things and you're like, gosh, I'm not sure how that green would look all over my lid. Just sit down and try it. You know, the beauty of makeup is that it all washes off and you'll never know how certain things work on you. You know, you'll watch other people try things and maybe you'll be like, oh, I like how that tutorial looked. I didn't like how that one looked, but you'll never really know how it works on you until you go ahead and go for it and try it. So if you're scared about experimenting, pick a day when you don't have to go anywhere, have your makeup playtime, just start trying stuff out and see what works, see what you like. You're trying a different brush, trying a new technique, trying a different color they've never worn before, that can sometimes set off more light bulbs in your head than anything I might tell you. I know anytime I'm feeling like I'm in a makeup rut or I'm doing the same thing over and over again, there's nothing like just giving yourself some time, you know, like when I'm not shooting a video, when I don't have anywhere I specifically have to be, I can just sit down and play and pull out something I've never tried before and it's so fun. So please, have a good time, enjoy yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.